In this video, we're going to go over what the eigenspace corresponding to an eigenvector is. We'll also discuss how to find it and what it looks like geometrically. We'll go over a 2x2 two two example of finding a basis for an eigenspace and a 3x3 three three example. Chapters in the description if you want to skip around the video. Let's begin with the definition. If A is a square matrix with eigenvalue lambda, the solution space of this homogeneous linear system is called the eigenspace corresponding to lambda, and it is a subspace of the corresponding vector space. Now, this lambda i minus a times x equals zero, hopefully you recall that just comes straight from the definition of eigenvalues and eigenvectors that ax equals lambda x. And then we just subtracted the ax from both sides and wrote lambda as lambda times the identity so that we could treat it as matrix multiplication. So all this definition means is that the set of all eigenvectors corresponding to an eigenvalue, as well as the zero vector, make up the eigenspace. Those are the solutions to this equation. So the eigenspace corresponding to lambda contains the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda and the zero vector. Any eigenvector corresponding to lambda would be a solution of this equation, and so it would be in the eigenspace, uh, but also the trivial solution is another solution. So we would have the zero vector in the eigenspace as well. So when we went over how to find eigenvectors corresponding to eigenvalues, we found that there were infinitely many eigenvectors because there would be a parameter involved. And by letting that parameter vary over all real numbers, we would get an eigenspace. Before we see some examples, these are just a few ways that you could view the eigenspace corresponding to lambda. We could view it as the null space of this matrix, lambda i minus a, that's the coefficient matrix in this equation, and its null space is the eigenspace corresponding to lambda. Those are the solutions of this equation. We could also view it as the kernel of the transformation described by this matrix, lambda i minus a. That's the set of all vectors that this transformation maps to the zero vector. So if we view this matrix, lambda i minus a, as a linear transformation, its kernel is the eigenspace corresponding to lambda. Or, of course, perhaps the most natural perspective is to just view it as the set of vectors x for which ax equals lambda x. Those are precisely the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda plus the zero vector. That's the eigenspace. Let's do an example with this two by two matrix. We want to find bases for the eigenspaces. Why eigenspaces? Well, remember there's an eigenspace corresponding to each eigenvalue. And generally, a matrix will have multiple eigenvalues, so we're going to need to find a basis for each corresponding eigenspace. There are links in the description to my lessons on finding eigenvalues. Hopefully, you recall how to do it. That's, of course, where we need to begin here. We need to find the eigenvalues so that we can then find the corresponding eigenspaces. So we write this matrix, lambda i minus a. That is seen here, and now we'll find the determinant of this matrix to get the characteristic polynomial. This is a two by two matrix, so its determinant is easy to calculate. Lambda plus two times lambda minus negative eight times negative one. So we get lambda squared plus two lambda minus eight. We can go ahead and factor this characteristic polynomial to find our eigenvalues and we get that lambda 1 equals negative 4 and lambda 2 equals positive 2. So those are our two eigenvalues, the roots of the characteristic polynomial. Now we can go ahead and find a basis for the eigenspace, which is going to come down to finding the null space of the matrix lambda i minus a. We're going to have to do this for each lambda value, though. So we can begin with the first eigenvalue of negative 4. So we'll be finding the null space of this matrix, negative 4i minus a. That's just going to look like this, but with negative 4 in place of lambda. 
So negative 4 plus 2 is going to give us negative 2, and then down there we'll have a negative 4. So let's go ahead and find the null space of that matrix. So this is the matrix we just described. This is corresponding to the eigenvalue negative 4. We're trying to find its null space. So those are the solutions to this homogeneous linear system. To do this, we can use Gauss-Jordan elimination. Link in the description if you need to review that. You can verify that we would get this. This is practically reduced row echelon form. The order of the rows doesn't matter for our purpose. We can solve the system now. There is no leading entry in column 2, so x2 is a free variable. Let's say it's equal to a parameter t. Then x1 is equal to negative 4t. So the eigenvectors that are in the eigenspace corresponding to negative 4 are all vectors of this form. Negative 4, 1, multiplied by any scalar t. So since all scalar multiples of this vector, negative 4, 1, make up the eigenspace corresponding to negative 4, this is the one vector that we need in our basis. So a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to negative 4 is this set here, the set containing that eigenvector, negative 4, 1. This eigenvector, as well as any of its scalar multiples, produce the eigenspace. If we were to do a quick sketch, the vector negative 4, 1 exists in R squared, and so it would look something like that. The eigenspace consists of all scalar multiples of this vector, so that would be a line through the origin, which we know is a subspace of R squared. We can go through this same exact process to find a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to the other eigenvalue. Again, we would begin with the matrix lambda i minus a, but where lambda equals 2, so that's plugging 2 into this matrix. 2 plus 2 gives us 4 up there, and then down there we would have just 2, and that's what we see right here. We're then trying to find the null space of this matrix, that is, all the vectors satisfying this equation. We could perform Gauss-Jordan elimination to get this matrix into what is practically reduced row echelon form. Again, the order of the rows don't really matter for our purposes. We see there's no leading entry in column 2, so again, x2 is free. We set it equal to a parameter t, and we have that x1 is equal to 2t. Hence, the eigenspace is spanned by the scalar multiples of the vector 2, 1. Any vector of this form, 2, 1, multiplied by some scalar multiple, that's going to be in the eigenspace. It's an eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue. Hence, this vector, 2, 1, is the only vector that we need to form our basis for the eigenspace. Again, this eigenspace would be a line through the origin. It's a subspace of R squared. Let's quickly take a more in-depth look at the geometry of these eigenspaces. This, again, is the eigenspace corresponding to negative 4. We found that the vector negative 4, 1 was a basis for this eigenspace. And so the eigenspace is just the line consisting of all scalar multiples of that vector, which is a line through the origin. Any vector in the eigenspace, that is any vector on this line, when multiplied by our original matrix A, will actually just be scaled by a factor of negative 4. That's how eigenvectors work. So if we multiplied this vector by the matrix A, it would have the effect of multiplying it by negative 4, and it would then map to this vector, 16, negative 4. On the other hand, this is the eigenspace corresponding to the other eigenvalue of positive 2. We found that the vector 2, 1 formed a basis for this eigenspace, and so the space is the line traced out out by that vector that's in the basis. If you take any vector that's on this line, that is, any vector in the eigenspace, and multiply it by the original matrix A, that has the effect of just scaling the eigenvector by 2. So that's a look at the geometry of these eigenspaces for 2 by 2 matrix. Since it's 2 by 2, the eigenspaces are in R squared. If we do a 3 by 3 example, which we'll do next, those eigenspaces exist in R cubed. Let's begin by finding bases for the eigenspaces of this 3 by 3 matrix. We'll do it again in a similar way to the previous example. It's just a little bit more difficult now because it's a 3 by 3 matrix. So we begin by finding the determinant of lambda i minus a. 
Lambda i minus a looks like this, and we can find its determinant easily with a cofactor expansion along row 3. So that's going to be lambda plus 2 multiplied by the corresponding minor. So lambda minus 1 times lambda minus 1 minus negative 3 times negative 3, so minus 9. We can then expand this to get this quadratic, which we can then factor, and then we can simplify, and this is the factored form of our characteristic polynomial. Its roots, which are the eigenvalues, are negative 2 and positive 4. So we need to find a basis for the eigenspaces corresponding to this eigenvalue and to this eigenvalue. Let's begin with the eigenvalue negative 2. So to find a basis for the corresponding eigenspace, we'll need to find the null space of this matrix, but with negative 2 plugged in for lambda. So this entry would be negative 3, this entry would be negative 3, and this entry would be 0. So here is that matrix we just described. We, of course, are looking for the solutions to this homogeneous system. If we perform Gauss-Jordan elimination, you can verify that we get this reduced row echelon form. There's no leading entry in column 2 and no leading entry in column 3. So x2 and x3 are both free variables. Say x2 equals s and x3 equals t. We have from row 1 that x1 is equal to negative x2, so negative s. So then the eigenspace consists of vectors of this form, negative 1, 1, 0 times s, so those are the coefficients of the parameter s, plus 0, 0, 1 times the parameter t. Those are the coefficients of t in the solution equations. Hence, the basis for this eigenspace actually contains two vectors. These are linearly independent vectors that span the eigenspace, so our basis consists of both of them. We know, since we just solved the system, that these two vectors span the eigenspace. We also know they're linearly independent because it's clear they're not scalar multiples of each other, and any time we solve a system, like this with Gauss-Jordan elimination, you're going to get linearly independent vectors. So this is a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to negative 2. It's the set containing these two vectors. By multiplying each of these vectors by any real number we like and then combining them, we can span the entire eigenspace. In this case, that would be a plane through the origin. So again, it's a subspace of R cubed. All that's left is to find a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to the other eigenvalue, positive 4. So again, we're going to plug positive 4 into this matrix for a lambda. So this entry will be 3, this entry will be 3, and this one will be 6. And then we'll find the null space. Here's that matrix just described. We're finding the solutions to this homogeneous system. By performing Gauss-Jordan elimination, we get this reduced row echelon form. There's no leading entry in column 2, so we have that x2 is a free variable, say s, and row 2 tells us that x3 has to equal 0. From row 1, we get that x1 equals positive x2, so positive s. Hence, the eigenspace corresponding to this eigenvalue consists of all scalar multiples of this vector, 1, 1, 0. Those are the coefficients of s in the solution equations. There's only one parameter here, that's why we only have one vector, and that one vector is a basis for the eigenspace. And there that is. This set containing that vector is a basis for the eigenspace. This would be a line through the origin. Again, it's a subspace of R cubed. Any multiple of this vector is an eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue excluding the zero vector, of course. So that's what an eigenspace corresponding to an eigenvalue is, and that's how to find a basis for an eigenspace. Again, given an eigenvalue of a matrix A, the corresponding eigenspace is the set of all eigenvectors corresponding to that eigenvalue, as well as, of course, the zero vector. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you want to help support what I do, please consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get access to early and exclusive videos as well as access to the lecture notes that I use in the videos if you join at the premium tier or above. Thanks for watching. Uh, stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Love. Stressed out, honey. I've been stressed out lately, don't know what's what
but don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.